Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Hey, thanks again for tuning in to Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. I'm Joel, the Breeze Man. Mike Kapler, the Cap, is with me. We're getting into some really interesting stuff the last few weeks, I think, here on Growing in Grace talking about the uh, the words of Jesus that indeed we're not running from uh, we're lifting up the words of Jesus and talking about them in the context in which they were spoken and so we hope that you'll go back and listen we say this all the time right cap you know hope that you'll go back and listen to the uh, previous you know maybe two or three podcasts uh, that we've done to get a little bit more of a, a foundation for what we're saying here today so that we don't have to repeat everything that we've already said. But uh, we'll move on here, talking uh, some more about Jesus and his words in the Sermon on the Mount. As he was talking, again, as we've shared in the last couple of weeks, he was talking as a Jew, as a Jewish person. He was teaching Jewish people. These people that he was talking to, they were Jewish people, they understood what he was saying from a Jewish perspective. If Jesus would have been talking to Gentiles, that is, people who are not Jews, they wouldn't have understood what he was saying. Like when he said, you have heard that it was said this, or um, it is written this, they wouldn't have had a clue because the Gentiles, as Paul tells us in uh, some of his epistles, the Gentiles were far off. They had no part in that covenant. They didn't have a clue what this covenant was all about, that old covenant that Jesus was ministering under. And so uh, with that in mind, uh, we'll, I think we'll, you know, Matthew 6, um, the Sermon on the Mount, and um, see where this leads us today, Cap. Yes, and you did take a page out of my playbook by telling people to go back and listen to the previous (laughs) programs. I I would seriously go back at least a couple at growingandgrace.org and and look for hyperlegalism. And then we've got a few programs now after that, and they're all sort of following the same path here. Jesus continued in the Sermon on the Mount, picking up from where we left off last week. Uh, and he's, again, talking to the Jewish people here. Beware of practicing. He's not talking to you and me in Christ here, okay? Beware of practicing your righteousness before men. Stop right there. What is it the Jews tried to do under the law? They were ignorant of God's righteousness, so they tried to establish their own righteousness. And, of course, they fell short, which is what Jesus is trying to point out to them here during the sermon of preaching and elevating and magnifying the law. He's trying to show them that they can't do it. They can't establish righteousness before God on their own through their own works. So, beware of practicing your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward. So, the gospel, what is it? It's the righteousness of God revealed in us, not our own righteousness. So, again, talking to the Jewish people under the law here. Uh, When you pray, uh, don't be like the hypocrites who love to stand in the synagogues and be seen by others. And then he goes on a little bit further and he says, picking up here, I'm finding it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, When you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do. I'm I'm in a New American Standard here, and I know you've got different translations out there. That word Gentiles, it's accurate. It might also be uh, tax collectors or heathens or something like that. But when you are praying, do not use, and get this phrase, meaningless repetition as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words. So don't be like them. Don't be like those Gentiles. Again, Joel, are you a Gentile? That's right. That's me. Yeah. I'm a Gentile. Probably not talking to us here. Right. Exactly. He criticized, he criticized us. Yeah. At least, at least the <laughs> Gentiles back at that time. So don't be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask them. Uh, and then he goes on to say, pray like this. Pray in this way. And then we have the famous Lord's Prayer. And I don't want to burst anybody's bubble here, but this entire context of the Sermon on the Mount is the law magnified. We've turned this into a new covenant prayer and I don't think it's right. That's just my opinion. Joel might not even agree with me on that. I don't know. (laughs) We've talked about this. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, we've talked about this on the podcast. Well, I know, but I I didn't know if I was taking it too far. (laughs) You've gone too far, you hyper-grace person. You're running from the words of Jesus. So I think this this whole thing is, is out of context when it comes to Christianity. 
okay, our Father who is in heaven. Well, first of all, he just got done telling us, don't repeat the same things all over again, meaningless repetition. What do we do with the Lord's Prayer? We repeat it over and over <laughs> That's again. That's true. And it's, yeah, and it's really? right after he got done telling us not to do that. Is it just me? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. So again, Jesus, at times when he spoke, not here, but at times he would refer to the, the coming new covenant. And he kind of is here a little bit. But that, that word kingdom, it isn't just, uh, when, I, when you think of a kingdom, that's, that's kind of what you think of. You, you think of a, a kingdom, a dominion. But this word actually goes beyond that and says it's, it's not so much an actual kingdom that this word is referring to, but the authority to rule over a kingdom. Hmm. So the one in charge of the kingdom, it's really referring to Jesus Christ and, and the coming new covenant. Your kingdom come. Remember Jesus later, I think it was in the book of John, said, look, if I'm doing these things by the works of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. Hmm. So we, we don't pray that the kingdom come. Under this new covenant, the kingdom came yes. through the person of Jesus Christ. Yes. And God's will was done through him on this earth as it is in heaven. I won't start getting into all of that, you know, referring to the, the old tabernacle, the old temple versus the, the heavenly one. But give us this day our daily bread. Well, what did Jesus say? He was our bread. He was the bread of life. Forgive us our debts as we forgive others. Whereas under the new covenant in Paul's writings... After the cross, new covenant, Paul said, we are already forgiven in Christ. Our sins have been dealt with. So my forgiveness and your forgiveness is not dependent upon whether I forgive others or not. It was under the old covenant as Jesus was trying to teach these people here. And lead us not into temptation, which we know uh, that God doesn't lead us into temptation from writings in the New Testament but deliver us from evil, and we already know that the Bible says he has delivered us, us from the evil one. So all of these things you can kind of see now, and at the end of the prayer, after it's over, Joel, after he says amen, because, you know, when you say amen, that's like hanging up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> he says, let, let me summarize what I just told you if you didn't catch it. If you forgive others their sins, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if not, you're toast. <laughs> and that's not new covenant, is it? Of course not, just based on what I just shared. Yeah, I think there's a law about toast being there, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> there probably is. but yeah, I don't know if the Jews could even eat toast. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they were supposed to offer burnt toast or, or anything like that. They had burnt <laughs> offerings, but I don't know if that included toast or what. But you're on to some good stuff here, Cap, because not just uh, what we know as the Lord's Prayer, but everything that Jesus was saying there, Again, as we're trying very carefully to convey here, the message that we're trying to say here is that in the context that Jesus was speaking, it was Jews. It was the Jewish nation. He was contrasting them with the Gentiles. And, of course, Gentiles were those, again, who were far off. Those They were not part of the covenant. And so in Christ, what happened after the death? and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the Gentiles were able to be grafted in by grace through faith. Paul had written in Ephesians about how the law had to be done away with in order to make this one new man uh, from the two, from out of Jews and Gentiles, that was done away with so that there could be one new man. And so all of this, what Jesus is talking about here, is leading up to that. It's not part of the New Covenant. Again, just because Jesus is saying it doesn't mean that it's New Covenant. We make that mistake a lot in the church today. Just because Jesus is saying it doesn't mean it's New Covenant. Just because God says something doesn't mean always that it's something for us to follow. I think I pointed this out the, a few weeks ago here on Growing in Grace, where you know a lot of the Levitical laws, God said those things. But Christians today don't follow them, and so are they running from the words of God? No, they're not running from the words of God. <laughs> they're just looking at the words of God in the proper context, and I'm glad that they do. I'm glad that we don't follow the law that says uh, you shall not eat lobsters. You, you should not eat uh, you know, things from the sea that don't have scales and fins, because a lot of people love lobster today, and I love bacon. Man, I can't live without bacon and so I'm not running from the words of God, even though God said that pigs are unclean. 
I'm not running from the words of God. And we're not running from the words of Jesus when we say that his words in the right context were spoken, at, he was speaking as a Jew to Jews, speaking the old covenant words, magnifying it, trying to help them see that they had fallen short of the glory of God through their, what you were saying there, Cap, trying to establish their own righteousness through what they do. If you ever... Whether you're you're a Jew or a Gentile, if you're trying to establish your own righteousness by what you do, you fall short of the glory of God, God will find fault with you. The thing here is that it was the Jews who had the law, and it was them. It was though it was them back then. They were they were trying to establish their own righteousness through what they did. And so Jesus was teaching them these wonderful words to help them to see that their own righteousness would not do, that they needed something far greater. And the thing that was far greater would be brought about after the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. That's where he's going with this. I mean, first of all, he's trying to show these folks, look, I know you've been under this old covenant thing for quite a while. Let me tell you what it really looks like. And uh, it's kind of a dead end for you. I've got a better way for you here. And of course, the better way was himself. But coming to the end of chapter 6 here in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, we started out with chapter 6 on this podcast. Jesus said, Do not worry then, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. There's that word again, the Gentiles. So he's not talking to us here. He's referring to the Gentiles as he's talking to the Jews under the Old Covenant here. But they eagerly seek these things. They crave them. Uh, They clamor for them. Uh, But your Heavenly Father knows that you need these things. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Hmm. And all these things will be added to you. Now, what did he start out saying at the beginning of the chapter? Remember what we talked about with the righteousness? Beware of practicing your righteousness before men. Do it a little more discreetly. Again, trying to establish their own righteousness under the law. Here he's telling them, hey, I got a better way. Now he's getting around to it. Seek first his kingdom. Again, that's, that's not a, a kingdom per se, but the ruler of the kingdom, the royal priesthood, Jesus himself. You can look that up in the Strong's Concordance, that word kingdom. Uh, seek his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. But we don't seek the kingdom anymore, per se. We don't seek Jesus. We've found him. He's found us. We have his life. And now... We don't seek his kingdom or his righteousness because we've become his righteousness, as we said earlier. Yeah, yeah we spend so much time you know, <laughs> seeking after what has already been given to us, and I think a right. big part of the reason for that is because we're looking at all these things that Jesus has, had said leading up to the new covenant and thinking that they are the new covenant, and so we're trying to fit ourselves into these red letters here you got a red letter version of the Bible. We're trying to fit ourselves in there when really that's not where we fit. Whether we're Gentiles that don't know Christ or whether we're Gentiles that have come to know Christ. And so it's very important that we understand the differences here. I'm Joel Brzezinski along with Mike Kapler. This is Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.